Soon, all world fiat currencies will be replaced with only one, a one-world digital fiat currency, owned and controlled by the IMF. After all, this is the reason of this pandemic crisis. The main target of this is not people, but is instead, the US dollar. While the dollar share of global reserves increased in the first quarter of 2021, it fell sharply in Q2, resuming a more than two-year trend downward. The share of euros making up global reserves rose slightly and the share of yen dropped. The second quarter saw the largest buildup of reserves in Chinese RMB and other currencies. The increase in dollar reserves in Q1 was likely an anomaly triggered by increased valuation and safe haven buying during the early stages of the pandemic panic. A Bank of America report concluded, the de-dollarization theme appears intact. According to its data, the share of U.S. holdings has declined to 61.3%, slightly more than expected based on FX, bond and equity valuation changes. Central bank reserves globally rose significantly as they aggressively intervened in foreign exchange FX, markets. Total FX reserves rose to over $12 trillion. According to analysis by Zero Hedge, most major countries experienced a rise in FX reserves through Q2, with the exception of Turkey. That country continues to bleed reserves in order to stabilize its currency. There has been a decoupling between the level of dollar reserves and the trade-weighted USD index, a measure of currency strength weighted by the country's amount of trade. According to Zero Hedge, this divergence between the level of USD reserves and that of USDTWI is expected to persist, as the world is decoupling from the USD as the notional reference peg. According to the BOA report, no single currency stood out as having benefited from the process so far. Instead, many central banks have turned to gold. Central bank gold purchases have slowed somewhat this year after record buying in 2018 and 2019. But, central bank gold buying is expected to rebound in 2021, according to analysts for both Citigroup and HSBC Securities. Central bank demand came in at 650.3 tons last year. That was the second highest level of annual purchases for 50 years, just slightly below the 2018 net purchases of 656.2 tons. According to the WGC, 2018 marked the highest level of annual net central bank gold purchases since the suspension of dollar convertibility into gold in 1971, and the second highest annual total on record. Some analysts believe both China and Russia will resume adding to their gold holdings next year. Both countries have been aggressive in reducing their exposure to the dollar but recently put gold purchasing on hold. Earlier this year, Russia announced it would halt gold purchases effective April. Meanwhile, the People's Bank of China has not reported any gold purchases in 10 months. It's not uncommon for China to go silent and then suddenly announce a large increase in reserves. The Chinese government has hinted that it might shed more US treasuries from its reserve holdings. It would come as no shock if the Chinese replaced U.S. debt with gold. We've been watching this de-dollarization trend over the last several years, and have written extensively about a push to minimize dollar exposure by countries like Russia and China and their desire to undermine the ability of the U.S. to weaponize the dollar as a foreign policy tool. The dollar's slowly shrinking share of reserves doesn't yet threaten its status as the world's reserve currency, but it could be a canary in the coal mine. It's definitely a trend to keep a close eye on. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. Global tensions caused by economic sanctions and trade conflicts triggered by Washington have forced targeted countries to take a fresh look at alternative payment systems currently dominated by the US dollar. The globalist banksters have weaponized the petrodollar to the point that many countries are trying to get away from the dollar. It will take a while, perhaps years, but the dollar is dead. Why Europe, China, and Russia are speeding up the process of de-dollarization can be understood only if the significance of the Iran deal is properly understood. Iran is above all a case study in what Washington can do to you if you expose yourself to the US dollar for better or for worse. Tehran would not of course be considered particularly US friendly. But in order to participate in international trade, the Iranians had to rely on the US dollar and the SWIFT system, which handles international payments. 
Swift belongs to an international banking consortium and is even based in Belgium, within the EU. Nevertheless, the USA was able to build up enough pressure to exclude Iran from SWIFT. That's what the governor of the Österreichische National Bank, OENB, Yuld Nawatny, means when he says, the United States is massively using the dollar as a weapon. And with every transaction in dollars one is obliged to follow the American sanctions against Iran, for example. Even if the USA is not directly involved in a trade. For example, when it comes to oil exports to a European country. Europe, China, Russia and many small countries set new initiatives every year to make themselves independent. And gold, too, plays a major role in this slow departure from the US dollar. But for the world financial system, none of their currencies offer a viable, fully-fledged alternative to the US dollar yet. China and Russia are buying European debt like crazy right now. They are also banking on that Europe will soon pivot eastward for large trade volumes. Many in Europe also expect this simply because it makes economic sense and even from a security point of view. The EU has no intention to start a war with Russia. That is what the US and UK want. The US and UK are now quickly becoming less relevant. The list of countries trying to rid themselves of the dollar should include Japan too. They are the second largest holder of US treasuries. Japan has been quietly dumping US treasuries, although they still use the US dollar in international trade. What hasn't been said, most other countries are simply not buying US treasuries either. And the Saudis have threatened to dump their holdings to keep the US in line with its 1973 agreement of supporting the Saudis militarily. But, the Saudis and the UAE are toying with the idea of using the Chinese Yuan in trade. At the last OPEC meeting, nine of the 14 member nations of OPEC were wanting to pull away from the dollar. The Saudis were the major overriding holdout at that time. In 2016, Saudi Arabia became China's top crude supplier, so it's very likely that China will get Saudi Arabia to trade oil in yuans in the near future, which would represent a serious blow to the petrodollar. The dollar was doomed when it was weaponized. Obama weaponized the dollar reserve with sanctions on Russia. That triggered the crash of the commodities markets as the dollar soared. The dollar should not have been weaponized. A dollar reserve must be apolitical. When Trump came along he sanctioned over 40% of the world population guaranteeing the demise of the dollar reserve. Obama started it and Trump finished it. The US dollar reserve was always supposed to be neutral. Gold, for example, is neutral. If you have gold, you can trade it, but with US sanctions, if you have dollars, you may not be able to trade with the US and its poodles because Obama or Trump don't like you. Maynard Keynes was afraid this would happen one day so he proposed the Bancor as a composite currency for trade which was a basket of currencies rather than just the dollar. So now you have the weaponized dollar. The weaponized dollar is a national security risk for every nation that trades. Thus de-dollarization is the way countries can free themselves from the tyranny of a weaponized dollar. Reserve currency has always gone to the largest trader. That is now China. Why? Because the largest trader can dictate the currency of the contract. Australia now trades coal and iron ore in yuan. But the yuan does not have the wide distribution that the dollar has. The dollar has been the primary reserve currency since 1945. Before that, it was the pound, the French, and the Spanish. China is in the final stages of making a digital yuan. This has the capacity to convert any currency into instant digital yuan. It is unnecessary to print currency, actually as the dollar reserve has done over the last 74 years. They can do it instantly. Other forms of payment like Alipay or PayPal are also digital exchange platforms. So converting in and out of dollars is quite easy. The Bitcoin is not a currency, it is akin to traveler's checks so its speculation makes it unsuitable as a currency. People will lose their money on that speculation. What do dollars offer? Confidential cash transactions. Money laundering and universal acceptance. The cons. They may be manipulated, stolen, and weaponized. The dollar weaponization has become a national security risk for all nations of the world. So its demise is assured. The seeds have been planted. Also, note the US reluctance to develop a crypto. Why? They want to spy on all your transactions in the US and yet retain laundering capability outside the USA. 
It is a weapon both against you in the USA and to the world outside the USA. There is now competition for the dollar reserve, and each year the dollar weakens. The euro could have replaced the dollar in about one-third of the world, but the EU is dependent on the US with NATO. This political entanglement prevents that. Then we have petro-giant Russia, very interested in dumping the dollar, can exchange in oil and now the yuan. A digital yuan is a pegged digital currency so its value will not fluctuate with currency movements. It can't be laundered. The next major crisis will kill the dollar. There are two things that can throw the US dollar immediately in the tank. Number one. The massive debt that the US has accumulated and the continued devaluation of the dollar by printing more money. No one wants to be hanging on to a currency that keeps losing its value, or accepting the US to pay off its debt in funny money. Number two. If someone convinces OPEC not to back the dollar any longer and see what happens overnight. It won't be any creeping loss of confidence, but rather, everyone will be lining up rapidly to dump the dollar or anything else with a stamp of made in the USA on it. The globalist banksters have weaponized the petrodollar to the point that many countries are trying to get away from the dollar. It will take a while, perhaps years, but the dollar is dead. These banksters, who are supposed to be so smart, are actually stupid. They did it to themselves. This was the Atlantis report. Please like share leave me a comment subscribe and please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels i do upload videos there too you'll find the links in the description box you will also find a paypal link if you want to make a donation thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated stay safe and healthy friends